<clears throat> okay, so as the title of this video has stated, I think it's the future that I'm trying to reference. Um, I've sort of figured out like a life hack for audio in an echoey space and no one's going to like it because no one is here to understand it with me. So I moved into this house like two months ago. And since the beginning, since the first day, I was like, all right, I got to set up my uh, mini rigs. I got to put one there and one there and I got to get stereo. And, it, and everything I've done, whether it's H3, M3As up in the uh, mezzanine, it's not a loft because it's open on all sides. Pasta explained it to me. Um, I've had the heresies up here. I've had uh, several clipshes up here and I'm like, oh, these sounds great, these sound great. But there's a fundamental failure that I've been trying to overcome and that's obviously the echo. The echo is insane. So I built this TV cart. It wasn't originally vertical, but I'm, you know, I, I, I was gonna save this for an entire separate video where I explain how I made a battery backup completely mobile TV cart with a UPS and a look up what a little Link Think Center mini computer and I had a 65 inch Sony TV on it and a retractable cord that I made so I can hang the cord up and you could roll around things. It could be great. It'll be great. And my vision was to put a set of speakers in the bottom, probably the Triangle Elaras, if they let me keep them, which I think they're going to. And I'm like, great, I'll build them brackets and underneath the TV, which was again horizontal, I'll have Elaras. But through much experimentation, and experimentation is usually free. You know, sometimes you gotta buy a bracket or an adapter or $700 in like equipment, but usually it's pretty cheap to do experimentation. Um, I started going, well, all right, if I put two there, I'm gonna put them close. They're obviously can't stick out very far. I'll put them closer together, two alars close together. And then I started playing with speakers like these 570s. By the way, these are getting their own review. $400 for the pair. They were on JBL on um, Prime Day. For whatever reason, Prime Day didn't matter because JBL.com is not Prime. But I bought a set, blew money on, on speakers that I know I didn't need, but oh my God, do I need them. And I had these originally set up right next to that TV when it was horizontal. And I'm like, wow, these sound great. And then I moved them further apart and they lost all meaning. And that's when it dawned on me. And I'd done this experiment before. I was trying to watch um, the Trash Taste podcast on the shitty television that's still on the wall because I don't want to take this down because it's like seven inches thick. And I feel like I need four people here for when I die. Um, I was watching the Trash Chase podcast on the Sony on the ceiling, and I had the heresy set up like this, but I was in the kitchen, and I couldn't, hear, I couldn't make out what the fuck they were saying with the two speakers, the left and right of the thing. So I, I dragged the speakers out, and I had two speakers pointing out in the kitchen, and I still couldn't hear what they were saying. So I unplugged one of the speakers, so there was only one heresy sitting right here, shouting into the kitchen, and I could make out every word. So... The Eureka moment happened probably last month, but then when I was doing this uh, thing, I was like, all right, well, the owner left the sound bar. There's a Bose, there's like a $700 Bose sound bar here, but I refuse to use that because I'm not an asshole. <sighs> what do I do for speakers for this? What do I do for speaker for this? I have one center channel in this entire, all the shit I moved, two truck fulls and 19 car trips, I have one center channel, the matching JBL 520C. I'm like, you know what? Let's give this an ex let's experiment a little bit. I'll put a good center channel, and by the way, the JBL 520C is probably tonality-wise still the greatest center channel that has ever been made. I had an extra third Emotiva monoblock, mini monoblock because they sent me two way back in the day. One of them had a different LED cluster than the other, and I'm like, this is really bothering me. It's gonna look terrible in the review. And they're like, all right, we'll send you another one. So I got two matching here, and a third non-matching, which I'm like, fuck, it's sitting in a box. And then I tried to use a DAC amp to use it for the volume control out of the fiber optic out of the TV, and I'm just gonna say the complication sometimes is great, sometimes not. So what I ended up with doing, Sony TVs have a headphone out 
And I just happened, out of the grace of God himself, find that I had in a box a right angle, which was required, three and a half millimeter, four pole to XLR wire. I literally had a perfect wire. It's long, but it's a perfect wire. So I went headphone out of the TV, into the back of the monoblock amplifier, monoblock amplifier, single mica cable down to the 520C center. And sure enough, I had it when the TV was up, had it up on stands. I was, holy God. And I watched entire movies, TV shows, listen to music like we are currently doing. Hold on, wait, we have to currently be listening to music. Oh, I muted it. Next. I need to do some explanation. Um, the reason this works, let me explain why Zeos may go mono in his great room, is when you have two speakers and you're sitting perfectly between them, your right ear should hear the right one and your left ear should hear the left one. And when there's no echo, that's perfect. But the problem is when there is echo, when your room is poor and oh my God, this room is poor. You're now contending with that one is echoing there, 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 and you're hearing it just everywhere, and so is that one. So you've got twice as much confusion than if you had just one speaker, and that's what that fixes. Going with a single speaker re removes half of the echo, but Zeos, it's not stereo. You're not getting any separation. That's true, and if I was sitting this close to two speakers, I could still get perfect stereo. It would sound like horseshit behind me, but really, this space is not set up for me to like drink wine or whiskey or scotch brandy or black dirt whiskey. Don't drink that, it's very strong. Um, it's designed for me to just like be chilling in the kitchen doing things, or hey, I just wanna you know, do this stuff and watch, watch a, a TV show. And for that, mono is fine, and I'll tell you why. Because I cannot tell the difference between a good, close stereo setup and a single great mono speaker from 20 feet away. You can't, because that speaker is still doing that thing where it bounces there, and there, and there, and there, and there. So it fills the entire space with sound We should probably talk about the next uh, Eureka moment I had, um, which is making that possible. Because this is not a 1.0, this is a 1.1 setup. You see, I filmed the review in that back room there of the Emotiva SE12 subwoofer, which is the bigger version of the S8 subwoofer. You should be, that should be my patrons have it or you guys have it. It's out already. And like an ass, I forgot to talk about the wireless subwoofer modules they sent with the subwoofer. They wanted me to demo the wireless subwoofer module. And I'm like, well, shit, I guess I'll set it up in the basement on my point one and I'll, wait. That could use a subwoofer. Next track. Wait, last track. Why is this place rocking so hard? Well, and I'm probably gonna change this out because God Almighty knows the SC12, while being a great $400 subwoofer, subwoofers depend on the volume of the room and they have to be able to put quality bass in the volume of the room and that's cubic meters of air. And there's a lot of cubic meters of air here. So this is getting pushed to its limits right now. But here, and consider this review of these because they're doing a great fucking job is the Emotiva Virtual CU 24-bit digital audio wireless system, which basically is this, is this, it's idiot proof. It's a power plug, which is a USB mini, not micro, mini. Okay, Emotiva. Um, a single RCA in, it says line output, which is actually, this is the output, so there's an input side over there, and a pair button. And it's never been, it's got a bright blue fuck you LED, which I will eventually cover. But for the time being,
Mark Mothersboro. What the hell is this from? Ping Island Lightning Strike. Oh, that's from a. Uh, for the time being, I have got the headphone out of this TV in a splitter, and then one side is split and going into that wire, and that's going into the amplifier, the 0.1 amplifier, or the one amplifier. Monoblock, that's the word. The other is going out into RCA, and then the RCA is being combined into a single output, and right here is the other sender sent, sender section of the 0.1 sender. So this mobile, and I'll have to unplug it so you believe me, because you don't believe me, no one believes me. So this mobile television with a floating speaker on it uh, can be moved around. So I could, oh God, this floor is slippery. So I could use it for reviews or just you want to having a party, move it the fuck out of the way. It actually belongs under the steps. You don't want to block a door with a television or put it in the corner like that one is, just when it's out of the way or in the way or out of the way. And obviously I'll make a turn. That's a whole other bad science hour in the future. But that wireless sub thing now means that as long as I crank the Hertz on that all the way to zero, like as low as it'll go, because you don't want any locatability. A subwoofer can have locatability. You could hear where it is if you turn it up to 100 hertz. You'll be like, why does it sound like some of the music's coming from there and some of the music's coming from there? Well, because you can hear where it is. But if I turn that all the way down and it's taken me a long time to get the levels right, you can't tell where the subwoofer is. That's the point. So when I next track... Wait can't fast forward. Actually, I probably can fast forward. Wake up. If there was low end in that track, you just can't tell. The only time you can tell is if you're standing right next to the subwoofer and the TV's somewhere else, you're like, oh, there's a subwoofer. So this is, a v this is going to help 0.4% of the people watching this video. And I'm gonna say this, and it took me two months to come to this conclusion, mono is okay. As long as you are willing to accept the fact that you're using the acoustics of the room to make sound all around you, because even though it's not stereo, different sounds are bouncing off the right wall into your ear than the left wall off your ear. Like it's just, it's just different. It doesn't sound mono, it doesn't sound, I put, if you put on headphones and you set your player or foobar to mono, it's like, ugh. I don't want this, but with this sort of setup where you can just move, well, I'm not gonna suggest everyone build one of these either. This is more of a very, very Zeos thing. By the way, I have 89 more minutes of runtime because the TV's brightness is on the lowest. But with just the ability to move a TV wherever and have a single point source of audio, like if, someone, if I went to an audio show and they were like, hey, come in and listen to this mono speaker, like a Devi Delviat Phantom, Usually I'm like, fuck you. But a Delviat Phantom on the bottom of this TV stand, like in this space where there's nothing but echo for days, either you fight the echo or you take advantage of it. And this, let's change that song. Something good, I only have a. And that subwoofer, let me walk closer to that subwoofer. Luckily, the Sony's uh, remote is not infrared. It actually is just like Wi-Fi to it. Monster Masume soundtrack, by the way. I um, have to really sit down and pay attention because apparently we're rocking and rolling. You, you, no one, absolutely no one who doesn't know a thing about audio would come into this house and question what's happening right here. It sounds fantastic. It's that I can switch with a couple key presses to these JBLs in front, and we can compare this exact same track, which will obviously get louder uh, when we switch it over. Did I mute it or did I pause it? It's still playing. Okay, well, where's my thing? Wireless keyboards and mice are my favorite. So when I switch this, we're on 49 there. Please don't blow up. So, 
So the first thing you'll notice is that, well, the subwoofer's not involved, so that's, these are actually really good for low end, but you know, you can't beat a 12 inch with dual firing, so you can't. So, but also I think you can just, even with this song, which is, let's just face it, heavy metal is not exactly acoustical audiophile testing material, but, It's just so much more everywhere, and it hurts my soul to actually listen to it. I was considering um, getting the sound, sound head for this, just to like explain it, but we're gonna go over acoustics in far more greater detail in future videos. This is specifically this setup with a 1.1 and why it's better than stereo in an echoey as fuck room. Let's go with another song, hold on. All right. Switch that back from the Ropey to the Sony. Oh, I have the TV muted, okay. And you know I'm not cheating because that speaker, these speakers are literally the matching fucking speakers to that speaker, yet the treble's clearer? Like it's two tweeters versus one, clearer. It's four drivers versus two smaller drivers. Clearer. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to no one, no one is paying attention to this. But it's a discovery that I'm like, holy shit. You can fix acoustics in a giant space by just removing one speaker. And the fact that this is the coolest fucking setup, like it's literally like, the fact that everything I needed to make this happen was just in my, my house. All that shit you're like, Zeus, you have too much shit. Fuck you. I have just the right amount of shit because I can make shit like this happen like in, well, it took me a couple of days to figure out what I need to do, but I didn't have to buy anything or well, I bought the computer, but I didn't need the computer. So we'll fix this when I figure out a way to make this TV turn without me removing it and replacing the blacket. Bracket? Blacket. It's black back here, so it's blacket. A mono block coming off the TVs, and that's another thing. I was worried that the, the Sony's internal headphone out jack would be noisy or terrible. No, it's not. Because it's, right now it's running through a, literally a monoblock power amp. There's no volume control on the, on the uh, little Emotivas here. They just are. So if there's a noisy signal, it would amplify that signal no matter what. And then you would just play things over it, and it's, it's dead silent. So I want to thank Sony for including headphone outs, which makes me have to carry one less remote control around because I'm just literally use the remote control for the TV. Well, I, I could unmute. I want to thank Emotiva for sending me the SE12 and the uh, subwoofer senders. And actually I have a second receiver unit. They sent me a setup. It's got one sender and two receivers. I have that 15 inch Klipsch sub in the basement, I might drag that up here and then put that one under the steps or put, put that one, well actually I don't have my, in the broken dishwasher, just shove it in the broken dishwasher and then I'll have two subwoofers and then you can start, that might actually be detrimental. Uh, like, like just going with a single speaker is beneficial. Going with two subs in this space, especially non-matching subs would be maybe a little bit too much. I like to put one in the middle of the upstairs. I'll just throw the subwoofer up in the, up in the mezzanine and that'll be where it is. And you'll be like, where's the sub? I can't even tell. And it's the entire fucking second floor. So. The clarity of the voice. And I'm like, I know what's bothering you too. Is like, but Zeos, it's literally a foot off the floor. And I used to have it up on um, the little six inch, uh, sound rise stands, I have the white sound rise stands, and I just had it lifted up when the TV was turned. And when I lowered it to the ground before I added the sub, the lower it got to the ground, the better it carried the vocals, because it's shooting in a cone, but it's not shooting like this. It's shooting 70% of it up and 30% of it straight down into the ground in front of it. And that's causing it to sound bigger as well, which, probably is beneficial. I could just roll a carpet in front of it and see if that changes much. I mean, an ideal mono audiophile listening setup, you are nowhere near it and it's at ear listening level because it will still sound like, like over here, if I turn around. Did I mute that? I put subtitles on, great. 
I don't know where it is. The question is, can I even upgrade this? Like, I don't think there's a better center channel than that. I've listened to a lot, and there are more capable lower ND subwoofer uh, center channels, like with bigger, bigger drivers, that's only dual fours. I don't think I want that. I think this is fine. This might be it for this whole setup. I mean, I don't think this is going to be like a constantly changing thing. You will see one of these in the basement because the, the, A, the vertical 16 by nine is kind of cool, but for speaker reviews, I've been not able to have a screen with waifus on it and I feel real bad about that. So throw another $279 of the uh, subscribe star or Patreon money at that because I bought another one of these because it was really well built for the basement. So one of these in the basement with my 50 inch TV, and I know people have been requesting the fireplace return, and there's a chance I'll just mount the fireplace to it. So it'll just roll between the speakers when I'm doing things. Probably put a little computer like this is on the back of it. Sound demos for speakers in the basement because like I've proven, this space does not work for speakers. It works for speaker. And that's better than any Bluetooth speaker you're ever gonna find. Uh, so like these will be brought downstairs. I'll probably jack them up on some tables because they're real, they're little short babies. I can flop my dick on top of it. That's how low it is. They're like 34 inches tall and they're amazing speakers. They're amazing up here when you push them closer together. But the point is you keep pushing them closer together and they you just, you're just using one of them anyway. You're just using mono. So fuck it. Let's just, let's just embrace mono now. This is, this is gonna be the talk of the audiophile circuit. Is Zeos crazy? Mono, you, you can't, you absolutely can. The only time I miss stereo is when I'm this close to it, which I'm really not unless I'm like reading chat for like Twitch or something. But if I step this far away, I don't miss stereo because the room fills in the gaps. And there are many, many, Gaps. And God bless this subwoofer, my word. Just the fact that I could have a remote sub and I could find probably the best place to place a sub. I put it there for convenience sake. But uh, like maybe in that corner or under the steps behind the litter box, Chewbacca would like that. This is, this, is, this is my solution to this. People are gonna, we're asking, what are you gonna do with the upstairs? When are you gonna treat the upstairs? When are you gonna have a panel there and 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 a panel there and, and $5,000 in rugs? Cause this is not a small space. I would need like a 20 by 20 foot rug here. And then an 18 by 18 foot rug up in the mezzanine. And then I'm not putting rugs in my kitchen. So there'd be always a bounce and like, well you could hang cloud covers to like stop the bounce between the, like, look, I know I bought a house that does not have good acoustics up here. That was kind of the reason I bought it. It's the same reason I put the electric fireplace in my living room to prevent me from fucking up the entire apartment. Having that electric fireplace in my old apartment prevented me from putting a center channel, which meant I couldn't just have nothing but audio equipment. It was something beautiful. And by having a terribly acoustically terrible house up here, it means you're not gonna see piles of speakers, although there's still piles of speakers. We'll, we'll, headphones up here, small, delicate things. The basement's where I can go fucking berserk, and the basement sounds great. Probably the best acoustic space I've ever heard. Just concrete back walls, thin rug on the floor, open baffle ceiling with um, insulation and paper over it. I've, I now have the perfect listening room. I've explained it also that the, the, list, the length and the bouncing, it just completely evaporates all the sound. Perfect. So now this, this is something wholly different where we're just taking advantage of the uh, stupidity of this space. Alan Silvestri. That's... I'm, I... Can you tell it's not stereo? I can't. Probably gonna get demonetized for this, but. All right, I've made my piece. I needed to do this while the excitement was still there because a lot of times I'll, oh, this is great. I should do a video about this. And then two weeks goes by and I'm like, 
Hey everybody, here's a video about this thing. No, no, now, now, I've fucking, I've, no one's come to hear this yet. The amazement of this, you guys are the first. Well, I was the first, but like, holy shit. I didn't know this was even a thing. Now it's a thing, it's officially a thing. You have a giant, terrible room, and I've seen pictures of audiophile setups in like lofts in Miami with 12 foot vaulted ceilings and nothing but marble everywhere, no carpets. And I'm like, that's gonna sound like shit. Mono. You could put a $20,000 single speaker, put it right in the center, mono. For me, this is what works. Um, you're, if, you, if I got OCD about it, you could add like the two speakers. It isn't gonna benefit anything. I'm proud of, I'm proud. One of the things that uh, caused me to buy this house is how everything is like balanced. You've got a staircase on one side, you've got a fireplace on the other, but all the spaces and gaps, everything you got okay there, but then this, uh, and having like a single stack speaker, TV, mono block, single sub for now. This is, this is, this is joy. You're witnessing Zeus joy. Uh, that's all. If you want to download this wallpaper, which is uh, in particularly large, 16 by 9, vertical, I'd say that's realistic scale. Okay, so if you'd like uh, Blake wallpaper, she's in the description. Uh, links to everything I talked about, including the wireless sender. Thank you, Emotiva, for making that thing. It's it claims 24-bit and everything, but when you're sending for subwoofer use only, because it's not stereo. If it was stereo, then I could get creative and I could send to actual speakers. But since it's mono, it's specifically for a sub, and even though it has two receivers, it'll still just send mono to both. Uh, that thing is great. I mean, I literally have rolled it around this entire place, and it's never disconnected once. It never even, it doesn't even have any real delay. It's hard to pick up, but if I roll that right next to that, which I have done, there's no delay. So Emotiva's... I think it's called the CU, virtual CU. I mean, it's only sending probably 250. I have to see it with full signal if it's sending full signal by putting an actual headphone amplifier on it. But that thing works great with almost no delay. Like I can't, an, an imperceivably low amount of delay. It's not Bluetooth. And uh, yeah, if JBL still has a sale on their lineup, I don't know if the centers are still there, but these sons of bitches but Zeus, why would I want a micro tower? You wait till my actual setup final desk is done and these are the speakers that are there. Of course, they're just 530s with an extra driver. Anyway, I'm done. Check out my Patreon and subscribe star to see these reviews early. Well, this is a lesser review and more of a mad science rant. Um, both have the same benefits at $5 where you get to ask many questions one on platform, see these reviews early up to a week and then join the yard sales which are from the 1st to the 10th of every month, and you place your bids, and as long as it's an odd number, and you live in the continental United States, I ship for free. You live anywhere else, shipping is a lot, so you gotta be careful of what you're bidding on. Even small items like headphones, it costs me like $110 to ship to Europe. It's, of course, there's no planes flying with cargo. It's a, there's a whole reason. Uh, but yeah, that, 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 and hi-fi guides, feel free. Um, if one of the mods that's on hi-fi guides is making the post for this, I don't know how you do it. I guess it would be under, Theory? Do we have a theory section in Hi-Fi Guides form? We should have a theory section where like, hmm, mono, what are, what's everyone's thoughts? Oh, and by the way, I'm just plugging in a stereo jack to a, a mono block amp and it's, it doesn't seem to make any distortion or up the, like I was doing some experiments to make sure I'm not blowing anything up and it seems fine. I think it's just the way that it's wired with that XLR plug. So we done here? Good, because I'm gonna go back to listening to Helltaker. Taker.